Hey guys, we're back out here at the Green Hill Passive Project. We're going to be talking about the mud sill connection, right, where we have wood connecting to concrete. It's a very critical connection. And we're going to be talking about our wall assembly. So we're going to kind of get into the anatomy of that because this is a passive house. So we've got a double exterior wall here. So we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but first, our mud sill connection, right? When I say mud sill, what we're talking about here is where wood meets concrete, right? This is a very critical connection because concrete uh, isn't always flat. Um, it can be close to being flat, but it typically has some variation. Uh, there's some things you can do to correct that, right? We can grind it, we can play around with it. Um, but if we have a good foundation guy, usually we get close enough that to implement our uh, sill seal detail here allows us to have a nice air tight connection. And that's the whole purpose of how we go about approaching uh, our mud sill connection, right? Again, that's a very prone place for air leakage. And because this is a passive house, we are going to be trying to achieve uh, very airtight standards, right? We'll be looking at 0.6 ACH50 on our blower door test. So that is a very tight home. And so we wanna make sure the areas that are prone to air leakage uh, that we're deploying uh, good strategies. So that being said, between concrete and wood, we've got three things going on. Two beads of sealant and a uh, piece of sill sealer. So what we like to do first is put a bead of sealant, air sealant, on top of the concrete. I'll usually bring that in about, a, about an inch from the front of the wall. Then we put the sill seal down. Then we run another bead on top of the sill seal about an inch back from the back of our two by six um, piece of lumber here. So that those beads are offset. So when the lumber goes on top of them and gets cranked down, that wood stays flat, right? If we put bead over bead, we might have to, we might have too much material on one side. It's going to allow um, the, uh, the the wood to sit at an angle. We don't want that. So that's why we offset it. Um, so again, concrete bead, sill seal, another bead, then our lumber, and that lumber gets cranked down uh, through the anchor bolts, right? So when we are when we're placing our concrete in the forms, we wet set those anchor bolts. We drill the uh, the mud sill around the anchor bolts, slide them over. And then after we get all these detailing, uh, all the detailing done, and we put the nut and washer on that and crank it down, it really squeezes those beads of sealant and that sill seal. And you can see the bead of sealant kind of oozing out the front. And uh, that's ensuring that we've got a really strong connection there, a really tight connection in terms of air sealing. So uh, we won't have any air leakage between concrete and wood. Now to put a belt and suspenders approach on that, we're using the Sega Fentrum tape here on the exterior. So that tape, that tape is connecting concrete to our uh, wood sheathing. Um, so we're really not gonna be dealing with any air leakage here on the exterior right here at the mud sill. So really important detailing. And when we're talking here on this episode about this connection and our exterior walls and air tightness, all these things that make a passive house a passive house, uh, it all starts right here for me at the foundation, right? Because all of our lumber is going on top of that. So. Uh, we have one chance to get this right, and that's why we like to um, use these methods and materials here. Uh, let's go upstairs and look at the double wall construction. Okay, so down below we talked about that Fentrum tape, right, between uh, the concrete and the uh, mud sill, and that tape coming up over the concrete onto the sheathing, and then over the top of that tape, right, so we have shingle style overlap, of the Fentrum tape to our peel and stick house wrap, which is the Sega product here. That's coming all the way up and running up all, all of our sheathing. So this is our WRB, our weather resistive barrier here on the exterior uh, of the house. Um, so when we're talking about this wall anatomy from the uh, inside right to the outside, starting on the outside, we have a rain screen that's going to be going over, our, um, over the house wrap and then our siding. And um, in two areas of the house here, we're gonna have two different types of siding. On this end of the house, this is more of a board and batten uh, siding. And then um, on the other end of the house, the two-story end of the house uh, will be likely a clapboard or maybe even a uh, cedar shake. Again, everything will be on a rain screen. So we have our cladding, our rain screen, our WRB. And this is where we get into this double wall assembly. And what this is really doing is two things, right? It's giving us the depth that we need to achieve the R value 
to get to passive house um, R value uh, requirements. Um, so we have a two by six wall, three inch spacing, and a two by four wall. So we know this is five and a half inch stud, three inch spacing, and a three and a half uh, inch stud. So from face of the stud to back of the sheathing, we have 12 inches. And in 12 inches using a DENS pack, that's gonna allow us to have a R46 for an insulation value here in our uh, exterior wall assembly. Now the second thing that's really important other than having a high R value and being able to really insulate uh, this entire building, right? We've got, uh, jumping down to the sub slab here for a minute, we'll have like an R8.5 under the slab. Uh, our roof will have an R75, and again, these walls an R46. So we're really well insulated here. But this break here, the space between the exterior wall and what we'll call the interior wall here is for a reason. It's our thermal break, right? It is not going to allow that cold or warm air to transfer through the stud and into the home, right? Now in a typical exterior wall construction, we might just have our two by six wall, not the two by four wall. So what happens on the face of the two by six wall is we apply our wall board to it, right? And that can allow thermal transfer, right? So by having this break here, um, we are stopping that thermal transfer. So that's the whole reason of the double wall um, and the spacing here is for, again, for that insulation R value and then um, for uh, thermal bridging reasons. Um, and then on the interior of this wall, we'll have our wallboard, plaster, and our paint. So that makes up the entire anatomy of our exterior wall assembly. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not currently subscribing, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, please give me a follow on Instagram where we have uh, content from all of our projects that are underway right now. I'll see you guys next week.